Last night, incumbent Republican Florida Senator Marco Rubio was brutally crushed in a disastrous debate for him by challenger Democratic Congresswoman Val Demings. I have not seen a debate like this in a long time, and we've covered now close to a dozen different 2022 debates live on YouTube, Twitch and Facebook, as we tend to do. I have not seen such a one sided debate until last night's debate where Val Demings just crushed Rubio. He looked despondent at certain points. I also will mention Rubio seemed not only like he didn't want to be there, but sort of like he didn't think he needed to be there. His his attitude the entire debate was that Val Demings is sort of beneath him. Why does he have to waste his time as the incumbent senator debating this lowly other individual? And she really crushed him. Now, before we look at some clips, I will mention Demings wasn't perfect. She definitely wasn't perfect. There were a few moments where she gave Rubio very good openings for easy and effective rebuttals. And you heard from the crowd that they were effective. There were some moments that just weren't perfect, but she was really, really good. Demings came out uh, very, very hot after Rubio uh, accused her of never having passed any legislation. Let's just jump jump right into these. these. This is very interesting. She's been in Congress for over half a decade. She's never passed a bill, not PPP, not anything, not a single bill she's passed has ever become law. I'm proud of the fact That's we saved true. millions of jobs. I'm proud of the fact we did it in a bipartisan way. That's not true. Congress I know the really senator, true. look, and, and I'm really disappointed in you, uh, Marco Rubio, because I don't, I think there was a time when you did not lie in order to win. <laughs> I don't know what happened to you. You know that is not true. My first term in this in the United States House, I passed legislation to help law enforcement officers with mental health programs. Your first term in the Senate, you voted to turn Medicare into basically to abolish it and then turn it into an underfunded voucher program and then you gave the biggest tax break to the richest of the rich and said you'd pay for it with cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Now, not only was she very much prepared for these attacks, Val Demings chose to do something interesting during the debate. While Marco Rubio continued to basically address the moderators moderator, Val Demings regularly turned to Marco Rubio and directly addressed him. Now, in our live chat, there were some people who said this is not a good approach. It's coming off as uh, too aggressive and confrontational. Val Demings is trying to play from behind here, and we'll look at the polling in a bit. I actually think that this was exactly right, because when she would do that, when she would turn to Rubio, Rubio visibly shrank away. He 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 shrank away from the confrontation. Let's look uh, at more clips. And these are these really are good. Um, here's just another. These don't really need necessarily introductions. Of course, the senator who has never run anything at all but his mouth <laughs> would know nothing about helping people and being there for people when they are in trouble. No one planned the pandem pandemic. But our response to it is everything. Individuals were hurting. Families were hurting. Businesses were hurting. We passed the CARES Act, which the senator supported. There were some problems in the CARES Act with the Paycheck Protection Program that you love to take credit for. Some say it was poorly written. Some say it didn't help the people that it was supposed to, didn't save the jobs that it was supposed to. There was a way to fix the problems in the PPP through the American Rescue Plan and help people that were in trouble. But you played politics, Senator, and you did not do that. Your number one job as a United States senator is to protect the health, safety and well-being of the American people. You've been at it for 24 years. Of course. Yeah, she had a very good mix of passion, but also very specific claims from Marco Rubio's legislative past or lack thereof. This came up again during the topic of prescription drugs and it, it's just hard to say anything other than Demings was prepared and Rubio seemed resentful of even having to be there. He talked about pharmaceuticals. He voted against legislation that would help reduce the cost of prescription drugs and help cap the cost of insulin. And Rubio, again, it, it seemed that he was unsure how to respond. Now, one of the other interesting things about Val Demings is 
they can't go after her with one of the really popular slogans of 2022, which is you're part of this defund the police movement. Demings was a police officer, a police detective and a police chief, and her credentials as a supporter of law enforcement, while also supporting reform, make it very difficult to attack her on those lines. And when the topic of gun violence came up, the difference in not only knowledge, but even commitment to dealing with gun violence was palpably different. The majority of people in our nation want us to do just that. How long will you watch people being gunned down in first grade, fourth grade, high school, college, church, synagogue, a grocery store, a movie theater, a mall and a nightclub Congresswoman. and do nothing? Yeah. And that was a critical moment of the debate, in fact, where I think it sort of turned Rubio seemed almost defeated after that point. His only real successes after that point in the debate were when Demings gave him an opening by misstepping about his legislative past. And those are those are certainly mistakes that she made Um, on uh, continuing on the issue of gun violence. It just was really not good for Rubio. Why are these people going out there and massacring people? This is the same. Because a lot of people want to and they don't kill everyone. I understand, sir, but I want to go to Congresswoman Demings for 60 seconds. You know, people who are the families of victims of gun violence just heard that and they're asking themselves, what in the hell did he just say? Indeed. Senator, you use the, the Pulse nightclub shooting as your inspiration to run again for the Senate in 2016. Parkland, uh, Pulse is in my district. And yet you've done nothing, nothing to help address gun violence and get dangerous weapons out of the hands of dangerous people. True. Florida. After Parkland, after you made promises that you had no intentions on keeping to the parents of Parkland, Florida passed legislation raising the age to have an assault weapon, passed red flag laws that we've seen 7,000 plus instances where they've been used now. Our primary responsibility is the safety of Floridians. And Senator, 24 years in elected office and you have not yet risen to that occasion. And then when asked about it, you say something that makes no sense. Yeah. And it didn't make any sense. Rubio was asked multiple times. You previously said you would support changing the age requirement for buying a rifle. And now you don't seem to. Why not? And Rubio just went in circles, never actually acknowledging. Yes, I changed my position. And here's why I changed my position. And here's why. Um, One of the strangest moments was when the topic of election integrity, you know, whatever they want to call it, they they have all these names that the name it's the name you use already implies a particular position. But the topic of ballot drop boxes came out and Rubio talked about how dangerous they are. That's a method of voting that doesn't advantage one group or another. There's danger involved in drop boxes. People need to think about it. Okay, imagine if someone decides, oh, there's a drop box. I'm just going to put some explosive in it and blow it up and burn all of those ballots, and now those votes don't count at all. Why? Okay, there is there is something with elections. There are two things that are very important. Number one, the count has to be accurate. The votes have to be counted accurately. But the other is there has to be public confidence. Yeah. So Rubio saying the reasons that ballot drop boxes are bad are someone might bomb. The drop box. OK, I mean, hasn't happened. I, I wouldn't necessarily start giving people ideas. And he claims people don't have confidence in the drop boxes. Well, the first thing has never happened and he probably shouldn't be encouraging people to do it. Bombing a drop box. The second thing is the reason some people don't have confidence in drop boxes is because people like Marco Rubio tell them that they the drop boxes can't be trusted, that you shouldn't have confidence in them. It's the, it's a vicious circle. We need voting systems that people confide in. And the reason people don't confide in this one is because I told them not to. Oh, well, stop telling them not to confide in it. And then we would eliminate that problem. Uh, Rubio earlier in the debate said, you know, on gun laws, stricter gun laws don't make a difference because the criminals would find a way around it. But then he's saying, well, we got to get rid of the drop boxes to avoid someone blowing one up. Well, wouldn't criminals just find a different way to burn ballots if that's what they were determined to do? It doesn't really make any sense. One more clip. The topic of abortion came up and there were a lot of clips I could play on this. But in the interest of time, 
Let's look at one in particular. This is really kind of emblematic of the dynamic on this issue during yesterday's debate. That you talk about Lindsey Graham's bill. That's a four month ban. OK, that is more lenient than every country in Europe, except for two. The extremist on abortion in this campaign is Congresswoman Demings. She supports no restrictions, no limitations of any kind. By the way, he said about six or seven times that Val Demings supports no limitations. She multiple times said, I support no limitations up until the gestational age of viability, which I, I don't I think it's between 21 and 26 weeks, roughly some somewhere in there. But he just kept repeating that lie. She voted against the four months. She's against the four month ban. She voted against the five month ban. She supports taxpayer funded abortion on demand for any reason at any time up until the moment of birth. That's what she supports. That's the extreme position here. I have shown a willingness to work with people to save unborn innocent human life. She opposes any limitation of any kind, and no one ever asks them about that. Guys, William Demings. Senator, how gullible do you really think Florida voters are? Well, the people voting for Rubio are very gullible, so she's actually on to something there. Number one, you have been clear that you s support no exceptions, even including rape and incest. Now, as a police detective who investigated cases of rape and incest, no, Senator, I don't think it's OK for a 10 year old girl to be raped and have to carry the seed of her rapist. Mm. No, I don't think it's OK for you to make decisions for women and girls as a senator. I think those decisions are made between the woman, her family, her doctor and her faith. And to sit over or to stand over there and say that I support, don't support abortions up to the time of birth is just a lie. But to help protect the life of the mother, which you looked at that like it was just, well, kind of a, well, that's kind of a side issue. Senator, you know that you have said you don't support any exception. So the debate dramatically in Deming's favor. The question is, is it too little too late? Because the polling is not particularly good for Val Deming's latest uh, real clear politics. Average of recent polling has Marco Rubio up four point seven points, just shy of five points. That is a big deficit to overcome in just two and a half weeks or how long do we have left until the election? One, two, uh, just under three weeks. It is a deficit to overcome. But let's hope that yesterday's debate performance will help Val Demings overcome some of it. One other thing, it always happens. You know, this 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 has been going on for so long. When a woman like Val Demings shows up, takes the aggressive approach, turns and looks at Rubio when she's telling him that he's lying, points to Rubio. There are always reactions that, oh, she's being too aggressive. She's too assertive, et cetera, et cetera. And the same sort of demeanor from male candidates is often seen as powerful, commanding, uh, indicative of uh, uh, control over the issues and the circumstances. And there were indeed even people in my chat yesterday saying, oh, De Demings is coming off too aggressive, turning this, that, the other thing. I think she did. A, I, I genuinely think she did a great job. She, she did a fantastic job. One of the best debate performances so far. Not perfect, but very, very close. And let's see what kind of ground, if any, Val Demings can make up in the 20 or so days between now and the election. Let me know your thoughts, your reaction to the debate. You can find me on Twitter at D Pacman. Right now, many of us are asking ourselves, what's the best way to help the people affected by the recent hurricanes? And the truth is giving them cash is one of the best things you can do because cash is so cost effective when you give families cash. You're also empowering them to choose for themselves how to best improve their situation. And I've talked before about our sponsor, Give Directly. Give Directly is a nonprofit that just lets donors like you send cash directly to families who need it the most. Give Directly is a great organization I've been following for years. A lot of their focus is on impoverished families in Africa. But right now, Give Directly is also allowing you to send cash directly to families impacted by hurricanes Ian and Fiona. During Hurricane Ian, more than two and a half million people were ordered to leave their homes. Expenses are rising. They need food, shelter, transportation. Hurricane Fiona hit Puerto Rico on September 18th. More than 12,000 people displaced. The island is still in a state of emergency and people need help. 
Visit givedirectly.org slash Pacman to learn more and send money directly to someone who needs it. The link is down below.